And then a sugar wandered in. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Only recently I was explaining to you that the sugars have been caramelised and have not been appearing in the comment section to any noticeable degree. I spoke about this in a recent video expressing my views as to why this has occurred. Nevertheless, there was one that rather bravely decided to venture into my inbox. I make my general email address freely available. It appears on my website, it appears in the video description to my various videos. It's easy enough to send me an email should you wish to do so. And I receive all manner of interesting things in my inbox, but that's a tale for another occasion. It is rather unusual for a sugar to appear there. They generally appear to be rather fearful of approaching me direct. They would rather issue an insult in the comment section directed towards me or my viewers than correspond with me directly. But from time to time, the old one pops up and largely I ignore them because there's little to be gained in spending time interacting with them. But on this occasion, since it had been some time since there'd been any sugar near me, I thought that I would entertain myself a little as a consequence of the communication that I had received and have a little bit of back and forth with the individual to see how far they would go, how long they would endure it and what they would write. And I also thought that you would find that rather entertaining to see the mindset of the sugar at work. So, settle back because now a sugar has wandered into the world of the Ultra. I have a number of different inboxes. Some relate to my professional matters, some my personal matters, and others relate to what I call blog world. And there are several inboxes appertaining to blog world, with the main one being the narcissus1909 at gmail.com. Thus, I'm away from my desk about other matters, sleep, for instance, exercise, and attending to professional matters. When I return, I noticed that an email had snuck in from someone called Eva. I have declined to provide this person's full name because the exchange was just between her and me. But nevertheless, I deem it appropriate to bring it to your attention because she intruded into my inbox without invitation and in a rude manner. For she writes, I think you people are disgusting. So immediately, I'm part of you people, although she doesn't, as you'd expect, provide any particularization as to what you people are. But it's a rather pejorative beginning, isn't it? Constantly, I think she means repeatedly, ragging on Megan. Straight away, we know that a sugar has entered the room, for she can't even spell her heroine's name correctly. You people, there we are again, are... A flipping racists. And you don't want to admit it. Thus, not only am I accused of being a racist, but the people to which I belong are being accused are accused of being racist, which in itself strikes me as potentially racist. You people are a frigging racist, note again, poor grammar, and you don't want to admit it. Take a look at yourselves in the mirror. Well, if I do, I see a ruggedly handsome chap looking back at me, but that's not your point, I'm sure. And analyse yourselves. I don't need to. I know what I am before you degrade someone else. It's a constant attack by you people. I think you mean repeated. That's called bullying in my book. Oh, and now we're going to get shouty. Are you a bully? Well, you don't seem very sure, Eva. On the one hand, you say it's bullying, but then you have to ask me. So you seem to doubt yourself. I'm so glad they are living in America, which naturally is referenced the gruesome twosome. Your dysfunctional country doesn't deserve them. Well, there are certain things that don't function particularly well about the United Kingdom, but you're right. The United Kingdom doesn't deserve them. Nobody deserves those two parasites. 
You'll notice, of course, that it's immediately pejorative, that there's a lack of capitalization, the grammar is incorrect, and, of course, the cherry on the top, the complete inability to spell this one's wife's name correctly. Ordinarily, I would just laugh and shove it in a folder, but on this occasion, after a few days had elapsed, and not hearing anything further from Eva, I thought it merited a response. I thought, I'll give her a little poke and see what comes of it. Thus I wrote back, I suggest you learn how to write English correctly and how to spell her name. It is Megan, not Megan, before lecturing me. You really are thick as mince. It's a statement of fact, but also a provocation. So I thought, let's send that and we'll see what comes of it. Having allowed a few days to pass from the receipt of Eva's email to me before sending my response, it didn't take her long to respond, and the following exchange comes all in the same day on Friday. Her response this time is to the point, stop bullying, understand that. So, she deems it as appropriate to be prescriptive with regard to my behaviour. Of course, if she had any inkling of what I am, she would realise this is futile, but of course the sugars are not blessed for actually understanding who they're dealing with and nor for exhibiting any intelligence. I thus replied, You mean in the way this one's wife bullied a child, bullied staff, that kind of bullying? I thought I would throw back in her face the fact that the woman that she seeks to defend is indeed a bully herself. This prompted this response. People did the same thing to Diana. Oh, so we're bringing up somebody different now. She wanted to move to America. You people, there we are, you people again, are cruel. With all the crap you have going on in the United Kingdom and your dysfunction, are your focus on Harry and his wife? Choose another target. You people, once again, have her on your brain. Well, so do you, Eva. You're the one that's been moved to write to me about her. I didn't write to you. So racist. There we are, throwing that term around again. Wanting to know the skin colour of her baby. Disgusting. Well, that isn't an established fact. It's likely a revision of history brought up by the narcissist, but you carry on there. That colonialist attitude has to change. I see. So she is already determining that the entire populace of the United Kingdom still maintains a colonialist attitude. And she's telling us that it has to change. It's not haughty or high-handed at all, is it? Well, your latest immigration quotas will awaken you from your sleep. It's racism. There we are, banding that around again, and everyone knows it is. Why don't you analyse racist attitudes on your programme? Because it's about narcissism and psychopathy. Say something that will help humanity. By the way, I'm mixed race, and how your country treated the couple is beyond horrific. Well, how that couple say they've been treated, which contrasts with a lot of the evidence which demonstrates they're actually welcomed, etc. Racism will not be tolerated any longer. Diana is turning in her grave knowing how you people treated Harry and his wife. Shame on you. As ever, a lot of emotional bluster, short on intellectual substance. I point out to Eva as follows. You didn't answer the questions. Typical response of the intellectually deficient. I can picture you stomping your foot in indignation as you get worked up over a woman who doesn't give a shit about you. What a waste of time. You accuse me of being racist. What race am I then? Pointing out the fact that she's commenting on an individual that she doesn't know. It's all standard fare, but it's ever so delightful to make these points to a sugar and see how they react. The response from our sugar stated, and if you think the royal, in inverted commas, not sure why it's put in inverted commas, after all they are royal, gives a crap about you. I never said that they did. But then again, she doesn't know who I am. For all she knows, I could be Prince Andrew. For all she knows, I could be Prince Edward. For all she knows, I could be Princess Michael of Kent. And that the royal family would give a crap about me. Or I could be the head chamberlain. And they do give a crap about me. But once again, you see, this is the intellectual deficiency of the sugar, banding around allegations towards someone without actually knowing who that person is. Stop having wet dreams about Megan, name spelt wrong again, and do something positive. You are the frigging narcissist. You are using an American platform to spew your hatred about an American. I didn't realise that you aren't allowed to use YouTube if you're not American. I didn't realise that was in the terms of service. That's news to me. Go get a real job 
And don't email me again or I'll make a complaint against you. Ooh, I'm scared. By the way, your precious princess is out and about at sporting events. When is she going to do some real work? Work that she's supposedly being paid for. Once again, the sugar engages in whataboutism, having to take a pot shot at the royal family and also at Catherine, Princess of Wales, because they just can't help themselves, because they're such vitriolic, small-minded, idiotic, envious individuals. It was time for the Ultra to have yet more fun, and thus I wrote back, You spelt her name wrong again. It really is too easy. You don't even know who I am. So how can you say the royal family doesn't care about me? It's no factual basis. I am, however, unsurprised by this, as you have the intellectual might of an amoeba. I do plenty of the positive. My channel has helped millions understand narcissism and deal with narcissists in their lives. You can watch and read all the testimonials. What have you done except fail to spell Megan's name correctly? You engage in a lot of whataboutism, rather than addressing the evidence, which again tells me you're not very good at baiting. You also use threat as a means to try to win an argument. This again demonstrates your lack of intelligence and reasoning skills. You'll complain about me? Who to? The email complaints board? You aren't even able to issue a threat competently. You emailed me first, marching in with your ill-advised vitriol. Now, since you are outgunned intelligence-wise, you resort to deflection and threat. I'm very much enjoying demonstrating what a mindless joke person you are. By the way, if you'd like to make a complaint, please do so in writing to this address. Complaints about H.G. Tudor. Room 101, nobody cares. What a crybaby, United States of Kiss My Ass. I bet you're itching to reply. Despite seeking to end the interaction, the provocation winds up even some more. Hey, Nark, you should worry about how small Kate is. Again, what about ism and why should I be bothered about Kate? That involvement over there has caused her to have an eating disorder. Not particularly specific, just like Diana. What are you people, again, doing to these people? Misogynist, that's what I'm thinking. Well, she claims to be thinking, but she's not very good at it. Thus comes my response. I'm a narcissistic psychopath, so I don't worry about other people. You call me narc, but you don't even understand what that means. You seem to think that by repeatedly mentioning Catherine in a derogatory manner that this will trouble me. It doesn't. All it does is demonstrate your unpleasantness and your inability to engage in debate. I do believe you will be ranked among the densest people I've ever encountered. Congratulations. You've achieved something at last. When you write, you people, what do you mean by that? Do you even know, or do you just copy what others have written as you stare slack-jawed out of your trailer? How come you did not finish school? There then came silence. Eva, intellectually outgunned, gave up the ghost. For now, at least... Perhaps she's biding her time. Perhaps she will respond with some pithy response, although I wouldn't encourage any of you to hold your breath to expect that. But I thought you would enjoy seeing the way that I toy with this no mark. What do I get out of this? Well, there's a modicum of fuel that's provided. It's not particularly large because it's in writing, and it's not potent either because this individual is a non intimate tertiary source. But it amuses me to play with an individual. I had a few spare moments, and why not? I also did so with one eye on the fact that I knew that I was going to make an example of this individual and create a video which would then enable me to triangulate her with my audience and amuse you. It would also provide further evidence of the lack of critical thinking of these individuals, their inability to go to the evidence, two points that I always make very clear to my audience, and to provide you with a bit of entertainment which would endear you to me. Thus, she serves a purpose in the world of the ultra, but not somebody that you would want to keep engaging with because ultimately one would become rather bored. But the exchange so far, I was enjoying pointing out the deficiencies in what she had to write and also winding her up. It would appear that she's perhaps gone and popped somewhere and caramelised all over her poster of this one's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.